While the rule describes the procedure for information flow to occur, the first barrier is to catch IDNR during business hours. Not good if the affected patient presents at the end of a weekly business cycle and must wait until opening of next business week. Then they must wait two hours further for the trade secret holder to report the toxic substance. Before they must wait further for other medical diagnostics and treatment. One, will there be a 24-7 crisis hotline at IDNR for relaying this trade secret disclosure? Two, why isn't there a 24-7 crisis hotline at the trade secret holder's location? Three, will this be remedied before the administrative rules are approved? And four, if not, what will IDNR, State of Illinois, do to remedy this and when? Will all health professionals be able to obtain a list of the trade secret chemicals in their client catchment area prior to emergency presentation of an affected patient as the rule is unclear about this in the non-emergency subsection. Secondly, this disclosure of trade secrets to health professionals, an affected patient, and affected patient's family specifies that a confidentiality agreement will be signed, creating a gag order. Consequently, health professionals and public health professionals will be gagged as to their education role and the Hippocratic Oath to do no harm. The public will not be informed to take precautions against the specific toxic substances, and the recurrence of the same emergencies will replicate, creating further suffering in the local population, tax already limited time of health professionals and their office staff, as well as cause further injustices when it comes to appropriate workers' compensation, personal injury, and product liability cases for which the affected patient ought to be compensated for damages to life, livelihood, property, the family's consortium, and all manner of related damages. How will IDNR remedy this failure in disclosure to facilitate justice for the affected patient, family, and community? Why is this health-related section not longer and much more detailed with respect to OSHA and clinical guideline-related protocols? And what will be done to remedy this? Thank you, Thank you. My name is Samuel Beard. I'm an Eagle Scout from Boy Scout Troop 107, and I'm also a student. I'm also a student studying forestry and plant biology at Southern Illinois University in Harvard. Uh, what I'd like to address is the water quality monitoring, or the lack thereof. We all know that high volume hydraulic fracturing means that low bores can oftentimes extend for two miles from the actual well site. Given that toxic chemicals are present not only on the vertical portion of the fracking wells, but also the horizontal, water testing and monitoring must be done within 1,500 feet at any point along the full length of horizontal well bores in order to adequately mitigate these risks. <coughs> Furthermore, although the law mandates that fracking companies have the burden to demonstrate the proof, water pollution testing must come from a third party laboratory that has no stake in whether the results report negative or positive. And obviously, well, this next part will go against some of the most powerful agendas and voices in the nation and ultimately the world. But the answer to our dwindling the fossil fuel supply is much more simple than utilizing new and potentially dangerous technologies to liberate energy beneath our feet. The answer is to curb our need for the energy in the first place by reducing consumption. <laughs> Additionally, investing in renewable resources such as solar panels and wind turbines and of course the ultimate source of energy, geothermal technology. These corporations will fight against this because they will lose the monopoly control over our power. The answer to our problem is reducing consumption along with over-reliance on destructive and greedy energy company. It's much more straightforward to say to all the people.
not a lot of uh, uh, media coverage in that. You know, there are uh, armed resistance up there. There's uh, wars that are going on up there. Me myself, um, I stand here as a small businessman. Um, I stand here as a, um, a canoe guy. You know, I rent canoes on the Cache River. Um, I, um, you know, I get tours. You know, from March to November. <coughs> And um, can you tell me in these, uh, this legislation, this, these regulations that you have, you know, um, can you, can you, is there any clause in there that, uh, you know, if, if things go south, you know, as we say, um, such as, you know, earthquakes and um, hydraulic fracking of the <coughs> uh, going downstream, uh, killing fish, such as, such as uh, how the, that has happened in uh, Pennsylvania and Ohio and Arkansas and, um, and a lot of other places. Can you tell me, is there a clause in there where you're going to reimburse the tourism industry? You know, or are you going to reimburse you know, this booming business that we have down uh, in uh, Southern Illinois that, you know, you know, I've worked very, very hard to establish a small business, you know, and there's not a lot of canoe operators in that, down there. You know, there's, not, there's nobody but me. Um, and can you honestly say, are you going to reimburse all those, those beautiful uh, places uh, such as the wineries and, and uh, the uh, places such as the, the, uh, the Shawnee National Forest and all these places that, that make a living off the of tourism? You know? Is there any clause where you're going to reimburse them? And if they do sue you, you know, uh, are they going to be gagged, like such as in other states? But this is what I understand to be true. You know that uh, when someone is sued in an industry, you know that, that they are gagged. You know you can no longer speak um, because of the money associated with the lawsuit. And uh, that, is, to me, is, is perplexing. Um, as far as earthquakes go, you know we're um, you know the Niagara earthquake zone. Is, is hasn't been active um, for nearly since 1812, since Dai Kunsa, the you know, stamped his foot on the ground, you know, and said, you know, if you don't band together against these colonial Americans, you know, he's talking to his native brothers, and um, he was saying that, and if you don't band together, you know, I'm gonna stamp my foot down, you know, and I want to stop my foot down, but if you don't stop this cracking. You know, that's what's going to happen, because that earthquake's going to happen, it's going to wreck our homes, and um, that's going to be that, so I'll say that much. Okay.